Hello, and welcome to CRPS Contender, my complex regional pain syndrome education channel. Today, we are talking about the neuropsychological changes in complex regional pain syndrome. This is the super simple version. The meta-analysis that we will be analyzing today is extremely long. This video will not be, which means I am compressing a lot of information into not a lot of time. If you would like to see a more complex breakdown of this, please visit parts one through four. The Neuropsychological Changes in Complex Regional Pain Syndrome was published in January of 2020 in Chronic Pain Hurts the Brain, The Pain Physician's Perspective. This is from the abstract. CRPS is a poorly understood chronic pain condition of multifactorial origin. CRPS involves sensory, motor, and autonomic symptoms, as well as reduced attention to CRPS-affected extremities reminiscent of hemispatial neglect. However, this neglect-like framework is not sufficient to characterize the range of higher cognitive functions that can be altered in CRPS. This comprehensive literature review synthesizes evidence of neural psychological changes in CRPS in the context of potential central mechanisms of the disorder, constituting three distinct but not independent groups, distorted body representation, deficits in lateralized spatial cognition, and impairments of non-spatially lateralized higher cognitive functions. Consistent with a broader disruption to parietal function beyond merely what could be considered neglect-like. Let's talk a little bit about this study before we hop into the content of it. Hemispatial neglect is a reduced awareness of stimuli on one side of space, even though there may be no sensory loss. This is usually something that happens after a stroke. There is a growing body of evidence suggesting that despite the absence of any brain lesions, people with CRPS can present with neuropsychological symptoms. This article provides a comprehensive critical review of the evidence for altered neuropsychological functions in CRPS. The authors of this paper conducted a literature search using the PubMed database for articles including keywords regarding complex regional pain syndrome published in English between 1995 and 2019. The authors limited the scope of this review to adults and concluded that the currently used neglect-like framework is insufficient for characterizing the variety of neuropsychological changes shown by people with CRPS and they advocate the role of parietal cortical networks in the emergence of these symptoms. Now, we will not be getting into all of the testing that they examine in this paper. We will just be taking the summaries for sake of time and ease of understanding. So let's talk about the summary of the first section, distorted body representation. People with CRPS consistently report symptoms pertaining to altered body representation including a loss of a sense of ownership of the limb, distorted perception of their affected body parts, with the affected limb being smaller or larger, misshapen or heavier relative to its true size, shape, or weight, having negative feelings towards the affected limb such as disgust or hatred or a desire to amputate it, a mismatch between the sensation of the affected limb and its appearance, lacking parts of limb from the mental representation, and a poor awareness of the limb's position. This is not only from self-reported measures from up to 60% of people with CRPS. These reports are in agreement with experimental tests of body representation. Body representation relies on the dynamic integration of visual, tactile, and proprioceptive information. Proprioception is knowing where your body is in space. Multisensory integration does seem to be intact in people with CRPS and thus cannot account for the distorted body representations. People with CRPS are able to update the representations of their body, but this process might differ between the affected and unaffected sides. The greater updating of bodily representation suggests that these representations of body image may be less stable in people with CRPS than those in the general population. Deficits in systemically measured aspects of body representation mostly appear to arise when people with CRPS have to rely on proprioception alone, and additional sensory cues are either missing or are incongruent with other senses or motor commands. A possible explanation for this is that the proprioceptive information in people with CRPS from the affected limb is not reliable. This disrupted reliability of proprioception in people with CRPS 
could mean that they are weighting other senses in a stronger way to compensate, such as vision or touch or auditory perceptions. There is consistent evidence that multisensory integration in CRPS is intact, and thus it cannot explain the distorted body representation. It is likely that higher level mechanisms could contribute to these distortions. Somatosensory, motor, and body representation distortions are largely confined to the CRPS-affected limb. Performance of people with CRPS is consistent with an overrepresentation of the affected side, rather than inattention, as would be expected in a neglect-like framework. The disruption of spatial processing in CRPS specifically involves problems with integrating spatial information with body representation. This is a phenomenon called somatospatial inattention. However, the proposed somatospatial inattention hypothesis does not fully account for all spatial attention biases that are found in CRPS. Researchers observed motor neglect in CRPS, specifically with slower movement initiation, slower movement execution, decreased movement amplitude, and decreased spatial extent of movements performed with CRPS-affected limbs. Between 17 and 90% of patients with CRPS report these motor and or cognitive neglect-like symptoms. These motor deficits in CRPS might arise from a learned non-use of the affected limb rather than the attention bias proposed by the neglect-like framework, or it might be a combination of these two different frameworks. Research suggests that people with CRPS might present with neuropsychological deficits resembling hemispatial neglect that can follow a stroke. However, the evidence for this is not consistent, and the authors of this paper propose a different framework. Sensitive tests of perceptual and representational changes reveal lateralized deficits in spatial cognition. This means your ability to tell what is left and right in the space around you. These results are consistent with a bias away from the CRPS affected side of the body and or space. But since the evidence is not consistent, other findings from visual subjective midline judgments point to a shift of relation to the self frame of reference towards the affected side in CRPS, which is in the opposite direction of what would be expected if a neglect-like framework. The opposing biases away from the affected side of space in some tasks and towards the affected side of space in other tasks cannot be explained by the different testing modalities that were used because they were both using the visual domain. The authors of this paper propose that the contradicting results from some of these different tests are due to the two different distinct functions of peripersonal space. Peripersonal space is when you stick your arm straight out, what you can touch and reach without really moving the core of your body. Peripersonal space is thought to dissociate into two distinct functions of mental representation, one for preparing for defensive responses and one for preparing for action and goal-directed achievements. Peripersonal space cannot be defined in terms of fixed boundaries around the body or a particular body part, but its extent is rather graded and dynamically changing according to the action being performed and the proximity or the subjective importance of external information. The authors speculate that the different dynamic changes of goal-directed and defensive peripersonal space specific to the affected extremity might explain the contrasting biases that they collated in this meta-analysis. Reduced activity of the affected limb resulting in fewer interactions with the affected side in goal-directed peripersonal space could reduce visual spatial processing near the body in the affected compared to the unaffected side. The authors suggest that the dimensions of the affected side of defensive peripersonal space could be enlarged due to a heightened sense of hypervigilance to threat. A heightened defensive awareness to stimuli that are potentially threatening to a CRPS-affected limb due to allodynia and hyperalgesia, which are excessive pain to things that would normally not produce pain or produce only minor pain, could drive a bias towards the affected side in extrapersonal space which is even one step larger than peripersonal space. An enlarged, defensive, yet diminished, goal-directed peripersonal space representation of the CRPS-affected side could account for the seemingly contradictory findings of attention bias. These findings suggest 
that CRPS is associated with contrasting alterations in spatial attention, representations of space, and spatially defined motor control. These neuropsychological changes in these domains are observed in different modalities and different regions of space. These contrasting patterns of performance in spatial tasks could be explained by hypervigilance to approaching stimuli within the affected side of extrapersonal space or defensive peripersonal space, and simultaneously neglecting the affected side of personal and goal-directed peripersonal space, stemming from learned non-use due to pain caused by that use. The authors propose that mechanisms of interactions between bodily and spatial representation suggest that there are two hypothetical mechanisms through which body representation disturbances might drive attentional biases even when body parts are not directly involved in the task at hand. A reduced sense of ownership and the increased perceived size of the CRPS affected limb, or more generally, body representation forming the basis for spatial cognition. A reduced sense of awareness and a reduced sense of ownership of the painful limb could contribute to this inattention. And a perceived increase in the size of the affected extremity could conversely drive hyperattention. Peripheral CRPS mechanisms might offer additional explanations for how the body-related disturbances could drive attentional biases. When you have exaggerated painful somatosensory input from the peripheral nervous system, this leads to sensory gains in some areas and sensory losses in other areas due to a suppression of some types of somatosensory input. This leads to mechanical constraints of motor symptoms due to underutilization from pain signals. This leads to a space-based inattention due to asymmetry of spatial representations from learned non-use. Therefore, peripheral from somatosensory and motor mechanisms, and central mechanisms due to body representation, could serve as complementary explanations of how body-related information could exacerbate spatial biases even when that information is not directly relevant to the task at hand. In summary of the changes of non-space perception cognition, people with CRPS can present with deficits in higher cognition regardless of space perception, including spatial orientation, where you are in relation to other objects, memory for spatial location, such as where you put down your keys or how to get to the grocery store, visuospatial coordination, where other objects are in relation to different objects, constructional abilities, this is your ability to have a 3D construction in your mind or on paper, the knowledge of orientation and order of objects, letters, and numbers, numerical and language processing, recognition of objects and faces, imitating complex movements, generalized attention, working memory, and executive function. These unusual symptoms appear to affect only a subset of people with CRPS, yet they do demonstrate that changes in the visuospatial functions are not limited to lateralized spatial processing biases. 65% of people with CRPS can also present with features of disexecutive syndrome and some language and processing difficulties that are typical of frontal and parietal lobe pathology. These changes include impaired sustained attention, impaired selective attention, a tendency to favor local features over global configurations, such as paying more attention to the trees and losing track of the forest, and deficits in spatial working memory. Evidence suggests that the neglect framework is useful but not sufficient for characterizing the breadth of neuropsychological changes in CRPS. Disruption of parietal function and or cortical networks involving the parietal lobe appear to be a better candidate. In conclusion of this entire paper, CRPS appears to be associated with complex neuropsychological changes that include distortions in body representation, deficits in lateralized spatial cognition, and non-spatially lateralized higher cognitive functions. The authors argue that the hemispatial neglect framework is not sufficient to characterize the higher cognitive functions affected in people with CRPS. Emerging findings suggest that the disruption of the parietal cortical networks can play a role in the manifestation of these neuropsychological symptoms. And importantly, these cognitive changes in CRPS and potentially other chronic pain conditions as well can be targeted for treatment. Further research taken beyond the analogy of hemispatial neglect 
could provide a better understanding of the neuropsychological components of CRPS and elucidate how cortical changes contribute to the clinical symptoms of this debilitating condition. If you would like a more detailed breakdown, please visit parts 1 through 4 of this little series. Or if you would like to know what other academic articles and journal papers have to say about CRPS, like and subscribe to follow me on this journal journey. If you would like to contribute to my living expenses, my Patreon is listed below. Thank you so much to my patrons, Chase and Emily Malcontent, for their loyal support. If you'd like to see the actual paper I am referencing in this video, or the notes I have taken on it, or see the slides directly, they are linked in the description below. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you learned something today, and I hope to see you next time.